All right, we're at uh, section 15.7, forced oscillations. And uh, the picture here is of a little girl. Uh, you stand behind the little girl and you push every time she comes back and you give it a, a, a nice push. Uh, you can maintain a equal amplitude. Uh, and, and that's, in other words, if she swang, uh, uh, if she's swinging just by herself and, and not moving her legs the way kids do to maintain their, their oscillation, uh, she would eventually slow down just from the damping. But uh, if you stand behind her and you give her that push to put in as much energy as she's lost, uh, you can maintain a, a equal amplitude with each swing. And so the, uh, the force, uh, is equal to F zero times sine omega T. Now, if we do a similar uh, thing that we did with the, um, the damped oscillations, that some of F X and the, uh, some of the forces in the X direction is equal to M A X. Uh, so you get F zero sine omega T, which we get from the uh, equation above minus B, uh, DX DT is V, so that's minus BV minus uh, kx, that's the restoring force, times the mass times the second derivative of position is the acceleration, mass times acceleration. And again, a complicated uh, uh, equation, one they, they thankfully uh, you know, you don't make us go through, they just give us the answer, x is equal to a cosine omega t plus phi, where phi is the phase angle. And uh, the amplitude is given by uh, F0, the, the uh, resonant frequency divided by M, divided by the square root of omega uh, squared minus omega uh, zero squared squared uh, plus B omega over M uh, squared. Uh, now the, you have um, different, uh, when B, you can see when B is large or the damping uh, factor is large, you, you, you get this resonance. Uh, I think we discussed Q in the, in the past where this Q is, is, this would be a low Q. Uh, the high Q has a very sharp peak. So this is a large uh, B, uh, this is a small B and this is B equals zero, it's undamped um, and uh, uh, the uh, one result, you can look up the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Um, this was a bridge that who, the wind set up a resonance and this uh, concrete bridge actually began to sway. It's a famous, uh, if you just look up Tacoma Narrows, T-A-C-O-M, uh, Tacoma, T-O, uh, uh, T-A-C-O-M-A uh, Narrows, Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Uh, you, there's famous videos of this bridge collapsing. Um, there's even a man walking on the, the oscillating bridge. He's walking on the oscillating bridge, trying to rescue a dog. Of course, the dog is freaking out and, and he wasn't able to rescue him. Uh, sad story, but uh, the, uh, it, it's true. Uh, so you can look up the Tacoma Narrows Bridge and you'll see this, uh, this event is an old uh, black and white video. Uh, so I, I want to get back to this, um, to this resonance. And I, let's see, they give us some examples. Um, yeah, where did I lost it? Um, yeah, the, you know, the resonance, you, we're going to discuss resonance when we get to electrical cir circuits. Uh, certain electric circuits have natural frequencies and can be set into a strong resonance by varying the voltage applied at a given frequency. Uh, a bridge has natural frequencies that can be set into resonance and the dramatic example is the Tacoma, Narrow, Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington, uh, happened in 1940. Other examples are the singing of telephone wires. I can't say I've ever heard that. Uh, machines often break if one vibrating part is in resonance with some other moving part. Um, and then soldiers marching in cadence across a bridge have been known to set up resonant vibrations in, in the structure and cause it to collapse. Uh, and there's a, I'm gonna switch uh, shares 
to uh, the uh, uh, Walter Fent demonstration on, it's called forced oscillations and resonance. And we see here, if we just start this, um, you can see that there's a, there's an exciter uh, set for two radians per second that's uh, uh, causing the little red ball to, to go up and down. And it just, uh, it's not oscillating very well. Let's reset it and let's look at the uh, uh, elongation diagram. Uh, let's start again. Uh, actually, let me uh, reset the whole thing. Uh, so you'll see it, uh, hello. Uh, so you'll see it start from zero. Uh, the, no, that's where it's going to start. Okay, uh, start. And you can see how the, the, the amplitude, which is the blue one, it's kind of all over the place because it's not, it's not at the resonance. It's not exciting it at the resonant frequency. Well, let's get it at the re resonant frequency. And the resonant frequency omega zero is given by the square root of km. So we're gonna, we're gonna, let's reset this. We're gonna set the k and notice that the exciter frequency is two. And so we're gonna, let's go back to the amplitude diagram. We're gonna uh, give it a k of five and a, uh, uh, mass of 1.25, so that the square root of five divided by 1.25 is uh, 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 is equal to two. You know, five divided by 1.25 is uh, uh, four, and, and square root of that is two. And so now, uh, if we, you can see how the the little dot went right over omega zero. And if we look at the elongation, you can see now it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and, and it'll reach a peak to uh, uh, where it, it'll become a steady state. And um, uh, so it's just gonna maintain that. We've just hit the exciter is just uh, enough to give us, uh, get us to the resident frequency. Uh, and now let's reset that again. Uh, uh, and let's pick Let's stick with the values of uh, 10 and one, but if we, do, if we do the square root of 10 divided by one, we get uh, um, uh, 3.16. And so let's put that in for our exciter frequency and see what happens. And let's just start it. And uh, uh, let's wait a little bit. I'm gonna reset it and do it again. Um, in a little bit, we're going to get a message, uh, and it's where, oh, there it is. Resonance disaster simulation no longer realistic. So let's reset this. Let's look at it on the elongation diagram, and let's start. And you can see uh, the excitation is the red. It's three point one six radians per second, and you can see the amplitude starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to the resonance disaster. So the bridge collapses at that point. Um, so there's just a little demonstration of Walter Fent. You can go to Walter Fent, walter-fent.de, uh, HTML5 uh, slash P-H-E-N. That means physics in English. Um, and you can look up force resonance. Anyway, I think that gets us back to uh, uh, let's do a new share. And so there's the, uh, 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 you know, we've just used, used different methods to get, uh, uh, get resonance. One of them wasn't a disaster. The other one was a disaster. Uh, oh, I don't know. I meant to point out that, that uh, you could see how the Q uh, changed the, the, uh, Oops, new share, not that one, that one. Um, if we uh, reset this and look at the amplitude, you can see how that's a very high Q um, system. It's a very sharp. When I change it back to the 5 and 1.25, 5 and 1.25, uh, um, you can see how it's, it's broadened it a little bit. 
So it's not as high Q as the uh, previous one. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's all we need to discuss about uh, this. That's the end of the lecture and that's the end of the chapter. All right.